Some of the wisest words I ever heard came from an older man. He told me one time, he said, nothing will humble us quite like pain will. Man, that is true. <laughs> you know, none of us like that, but that is so true. And that's one of the things that as we're going through this, we're reading a treatise on affliction by Thomas Case. He was about 57 years old when he wrote this. Been in prison several times. Man, his family had suffered all because of his conviction on the word of God that he would not compromise with the Church of England. And he was a Puritan pastor of the 17th century. And here's what he says. I want to read this and add some, provide some reflection as I read this. Let's look at this today. So here it is. This is about the fourth lesson. Now, I'm talking about affliction builds humility. And here is the fourth lesson that Thomas Case has for us today. A fourth lesson. It's about humility and a gentle spirit. One of God's purposes in tough times is to hide pride from man. Job 33, 17. Covering all his glory with sackcloth so that man doesn't see anything to be proud of in himself. God lead. God led Israel for 40 years in the wilderness to humble them. The hardships in the wilderness pricked their pride and let out their self-importance. Prosperity often makes people arrogant toward their poor neighbors. The rich answer roughly while the poor uses entreaties. That's Proverbs chapter 18, verse 23. Even when the poor ask humbly, the rich lift their heads or turn their backs with scorn, thinking they are too good to respond kindly. They speak harshly. These rude, arrogant men are hard to talk to. Pride is a trait that naturally runs in us and is fed by ease and prosperity. To tame this pride, God brings man into correction, puts his feet in the stocks, and teaches him to know himself. He humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. So think about this. How does that align with the prosperity gospel that is so prevalent in our world today? I mean, well, I mean listen, you, you've heard people teach this. Well, they've taught about how that God wants you to be rich. If there's anything wrong with being rich, on and on and on like that. So, you know, like I personally don't believe there's anything wrong with being rich. But I also agree with what Thomas Case is saying here is that prosperity, not just, not just talking about having a lot of money, but just prospering in anything. What that does many times by our nature is it cultivates our pride in us. And when our pride is growing in us, then we don't treat other people right. The more prideful we become, the more selfish we become, the more self-centered we become, and the more that everything comes about me, myself, and I, and how everybody else should be serving me and not how I'm serving others. What did it say? Did Jesus come to be served or did he come to serve? Now, yes, you know the answer to that one, don't you? So that's very interesting here is that just in that first paragraph, I think about how hard it goes against what Thomas Case is preaching here, how it goes against the teaching and the preachings of the prosperity gospel. We must be very careful um, today in how we handle and respond to the prosperity gospel. So let's continue reading here. Hunger humbled Israel and removed their pride because of this. If you look at God's people who are still in or just out of tough times, you will see they are the most humble and gentle people on earth. Like it says of the new convert, a little child may lead them. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 6. Before, they might have been so proud and stubborn that even an angel wouldn't know how to handle them. But now, even the least of God's ministers or servants can correct and guide them. The same David, who in his sin cruelly killed his Ammonite prisoners and tortured them to death, became so humble through the banishment and persecution that not only the righteous could correct him, but even the wicked could insult him. That's Psalms chapter 141 and 5. And he would stay quiet. If he spoke, his words were patient and submissive. So let him curse, because the Lord has said, curse David. Second Samuel chapter 16, verse 10. Man, that is, that's an interesting story right there where David's leaving out um, of Jerusalem when his son is taken over and the man is just going down by the, the wayside there and just throwing dust and rocks at David and cursing him 
And one of David's men turned, men turned his mighty men of valor turns to David and said, man, let me go take off his head. And David's, that, that was David's answer. Let him curse. Maybe God has done this. And God hears this. See, that was David in his humility. That was a powerful moment that David was going through right there. Man, here's the thing. Whenever we are suffering, we are naturally humbled. I mean, you know, whenever we are at the funeral home with a loved one and we're looking at the casket, a loved one, all of a sudden we're not hating other people. All of a sudden we're not worried about how other people are mistreating us. That will totally change us. And I mean, like, here's my question. How long has it been since we spent time in the hospital with a loved one? How long has it been since we've been at the funeral home over a loved one? Man, listen, that brings everything back to reality. Then all of a sudden, we're not concerned with how other people are mistreating us. We're not concerned with hating or being against other people. Man, it will, it's uh, amazing how that suffering will just calm all that down in a person's heart. Continue reading here. A man learns about his own heart through trouble, which he doesn't see during good times. He realizes how weak his faith is and how strong his sinful desires are. Nothing is as weak as grace and nothing is as strong as sin. This humbles him completely. He cries out, oh, what a wretch I am. When a man learns this lesson, he is close to being saved. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 3. God's plan is to humble his people through affliction first and then save them from it. Oh, Psalm chapter 149 4. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will, beauti- he will beautify the meek with salvation. Think about that. Listen, look what he said right there. He said, God's plan is to humble his people through affliction first. So, I mean, that's the, he, he allows the affliction because that humbles us and then save them from it, from that very affliction. Because then when we've been humbled, man, listen, think about this. We've been talking about this. We've been going through this reading. Then our gratitude and our appreciation rises up so much. Then our value of our relationship with God, it enriches that in our heart. We realize what we've got. We, with our, in our relationship with God, we realize how important the kingdom of God is. See, we, we've got to get our minds wrapped around this, that the kingdom of God, you can enjoy that and experience that right here and right now, and that is eternal. Now, the kingdom of this world right now, our kingdom through ourselves, that's just temporary and it's painful. It's full of sin. It's broken. There's a lot of, a lot of treachery, a lot of dishonesty, a lot of backbiting in the kingdom of this world. There's none of that in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of God. Jesus is a king of the kingdom of heaven. And that's why Jesus said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all your necessities, that'll all be added to you. You will have everything you need because that is what the kingdom is all about. The kingdom is about humility, is about serving others, is about seeking first God, dying to ourselves, and living in love, joy, and peace right here and right now.